Hello, uh, my name is Alex Buckley from the Learning and Teaching Academy, and I'm just going to introduce a couple of guides we produced to help you adapt your assessment for the current situation. So people will have planned traditional exams, face-to-face um, -face exams that aren't possible right now. So we've produced uh, some guides to help people think through the alternatives. Uh, the amount of scope that people have for changing their assessments will vary depending on the amount of time they've got to make those changes. So we've produced two different guides. The first guide is, is about keeping your planned exam as an exam and just turning it into a take home exam and some different options there. The second guide is for people who've got a bit more time to rethink the assessment and can move away from the exam completely to something that fits the take home conditions a bit better. So I'm just going to quickly go through the guides. So this is the first guide you can see it's called making your exam work as a take home assessment. It's got a quick introduction, some general issues to consider. Uh, when turning the exam into a take home assessment, some of the benefits of take home exams because we're adopting the take home assessments as an emergency measure at the moment, but they are a, an assessment format in their own right with some with some benefits. And then we've got four options in it that are increase in the amount of time and energy and effort they involve to implement. So the first option is no change to the exam paper, no change to the marking criteria and you just take it and run it as is as a take home exam. Some practical considerations and then some things to think about when it comes to marking. Option two is keeping the exam paper as it is, but modifying the marking criteria to rebalance the marks, um, to change the way the marks are awarded to take into account the changed conditions, particularly the fact that it will be an open book assessment. Um, and that might affect how you want the marks to fall. Option three is to then change the exam paper itself. So to take questions out, to add questions in, to change the questions. Option four finally is modifying the exam format. So keeping it as an exam, but taking advantage of some of the opportunities that come your way because of the take home uh, format. So there's some advice under each of those options. And then finally, there's a note on on plagiarism and limiting its scope uh, because that's understandably a thing that people are worried about with take home assessments. And then finally, some links to useful resources, guides that we've produced, guides from around the sector that other people have produced because everyone's in the same kind of boat, um, some guides to designing take home exams, and some just a few research papers on take home exams that you might find useful. So that's the first guide on adapting your exam and turning it into a take home assessment. The second guide is a guide to exam alternatives for those people who do have time to think through uh, what they might do instead of, a, of an exam. It's got a short introduction. It's got some brief um, advice, things to keep in mind when you're adapting a new assessment, and it's got links to guys that provide more detailed advice. And then it's got some useful resources at the back with some information about about where the links take you and what they'll show you. So there is there are various guides that people have put together at other universities really highlighting the different assessment methods that are possible, their strengths and their weaknesses and, and how to use them. There are some case studies of different assessment methods that people have used. There is some specific guidance on how to adapt different kinds of assessment for the kind of remote conditions that we're in at the moment. And then some eBooks that are available from the Harriet Watt Library that provide some general advice and guidance and principles around assessment design, but also do include some concrete examples of different kinds of assessment that you can use. So those are the two guides. We are hope they're useful. Um, there's information on this page about how to get more individual support and our contact details are on the guides themselves. Thank you very much.